All right, past me. I think it's time for us to get started. Uh, there we go. Hello. Okay, so, uh... about the, the size of the keyboard. Maybe it should be a little bit smaller so it's a little less uh, in the way. Hello, good morning. <laughs> How's it going? Happy Sunday. We'll do that. That seems okay. Well, and uh, good morning, Brainless. It's, uh, <laughs> it reminds you you need coffee. I, I, I had my coffee already. Uh, which is funny, the, uh, the little, the, the chibi Sabin over there and the, uh, over here. <laughs> holding that big mug. Uh, I don't really use like, a mug like that. I use these little glasses with uh, just a couple shots of espresso. But uh, anyway, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, so I noticed, um, so we have Dependabot over running in the uh, in the GitHub repo. And it opened a bunch of pull requests over the last week with uh, dependency updates of various kinds. And, um, so I think one thing that is one thing that the, so like all the checks on the pull request passed, but then I tried to pull down those changes and I was getting a bunch of errors. And I think that's because if I look at my Rust uh, GitHub actions, the... If you rust up update on Rust channel, where is Rust channel defined stable? So, uh, stable, obviously, apparently, must move. Um, it moved on is, is the short, the short version, right? So previously, this was uh, what we had in our. Oh, there you see over there. Um, we were on 1.78, so the Rust version that the Docker file was using, so the the image was uh, 1.78. Maybe I'll change that to be stable. Is that is that a version of the Rust image? Uh, look here, is there something tagged stable? tags so we have various 1.8s we have a latest and a slim alpine okay. so no so my concern is this is going to get um this is going to keep on happening Slightly the latest, latest the stable. That could be true. Let's see, it probably says in here in the stuff that I scrolled past. Back to image. If you're unsure about which uh, what your needs uh, are, you should probably use this one. It's designed to both store a container as well as a base to build other images off of. Uh, yeah, Debian. Blah. blah, blah. Word stable doesn't appear in here. Um, can we look at so the question is, do I want to change? environment variable to latest or 
do I want to change my action to use a specific version? Um, because otherwise this is going to keep on happening where pull requests are going to um, check out they're going to pass yeah um, so what does rest up update actually I just ran that right to fix the issue up. Uh, I had just run Rust Up Update, which fixed the issues, although we have a bunch of warnings. Um, new warnings. But uh, let's see, what are the arguments? Rust Up Update Toolchain. Toolchain names such as stable nightly 1.8. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. So I think for now, what I want to do um, is. And I could change my mind later, but for now I want to just say Rust Channel is 1.8.1.80. Yeah, should pin the version. Yes, uh, I think that makes sense. If uh, I guess a thing we could do is like do like a matrix thing to check with multiple versions, potentially, if we wanted to do that or. You know other things but I think I will want this to be on a specific version uh, until I want it on a different version <laughs> yeah so I'm gonna Let's see if this is any better update rest channel one okay good also this is new Got a little graph here of what's going on All right, so what are we doing today? That is, is, a, is a question. So I'm here on this pull request. Uh, use chain tasks to add videos to playlist after upload to YouTube. And so we'd started working on this last week. Um, started working on this last week and Thinking in some other validation things. Uh, here we go. So we're, we're creating a new task to uh, associate the video to the playlist. And that appears to be working in the sense that um, if I look at the tasks, we can see here was the task to upload that I did a few days ago. And then the task to add the video to the playlist was added. Um, What is this time here? I, I think this is the updates that okay, so that that like triggered and immediately uh, quote unquote completed. I do want to understand there are a couple of things I don't understand. Let's make a list. Um, why are tasks um, being marked as complete uh, after they fail? So that seems to be happening. Um, like I, I will see the status go from in progress or whatever the status is when it, of processing, I think, to being failed. And then it goes from failed to complete. And I don't think that should happen. Like failure should be a terminal status. Um, so I don't know why that's happening. And then, so that's why, because I know this task failed to add the, to the playlist. Uh, and so the other question is, why are the, uh, the playlist tasks uh, failing? So those are those are, I think, the things that I need to figure out to be able to complete this pull request to complete the the, the feature, right? Um, because the idea is being able to upload this episode, this uh, video to, to YouTube. And then after it's complete, it is associated with the playlist for the series. So the series has a playlist associated with it. It should get added to it. So 
So, um, I guess, let's see if we can figure out why this is happening. Maybe we can just look at the code and something will stand out. So how are things getting marked as failed? some stuff around um, 503 service unavailable and then it's not a 503 and it's not a success so it's not a 200 then we update the test status to failed and we break that uh, so we're in a loop here right ah so then <laughs> Okay, so we break out of the loop and then immediately we change the status to complete. Failed. Uh, what's neat is because this this function update task status actually pushes the status into our uh, pub sub um, channel, whatever it's called in Redis, then um, we see that status update come through and then the transition from failed to complete. So I think uh, we need to do something different here. Like we only want to do this if it was successful. We only want to do this stuff if it was successful. And then we always want to do this, right? So um, since we're in a loop, What do I want to do here? I'm going to introduce a flag uh, here. And then we can mark it as did we complete or not? Can loops be expressions? Loops can be used as expressions that return values via break. Okay. So we break here. It's not a success. We break here if um, it's a 503 and we want to review the task. So that's interesting, right? If we, if we requeue the task and move from the task queue, then we also don't want to update the task status to complete. Okay, so that's also a bug that's in this, interesting. Um, nor do we want to do this stuff, nor do we need to do this. Although maybe the answer is, like, is this logic the same? Is this literally the same thing? Con Q name task, con Q name task. And we didn't reach, we didn't change what task was here. Okay. So maybe the answer is we get rid of this. So it's always going to happen at the bottom of the function. And then what we want to determine is, do we need to complete? Do we need to mark the task complete, right? Do we do we need to, uh, is it complete, right? So then we can do something like, uh, let is complete. Uh, 
if is complete, don't complete task. I know we're going to do all this stuff. Get all of this. So this, this, does this, what am I trying to say? <laughs> well, that's the issue. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, we want to remove the task from the working queue. Why? Well, because whether it's complete or not, it was, it, it is no longer being worked on. Is that a true statement? So. Uh, if we, if we're to here, we completed the task, right? And we parse the, the response, um, we get the cursor, we get the, the data out of it, we store it, um, and then if cursor is null, then there are no more um, follow on tasks or not. I'm using that word elsewhere. The, the, we've iterated through the task completely. There we go. Otherwise we, you know, continue with the next cursor. So this should be true, right? We've completed the task. It is complete. Um, What's fun here is we could we could make a uh, an enum right to express uh, this. That would potentially be clearer than returning true or false here, since true or false doesn't tell you anything except in the context of what the variable is, and that's being assigned up here. So uh, I'm tempted to do something like. Um, work loop result um, continue or break is also not great I think in terms of wording um, let's call it um, Essentially complete makes sense. That's why we have the, we're putting in the variable is complete. Um, and then the opposite of that would be that it failed or it needs to be, uh, it was requeued, right? Um, and despite the fact that really there's only two cases here, right? There's the, we need to like mark it as complete or we don't need to mark it as complete. I think probably representing the status as three things clarifies what's going on here. And then we can say, well, if it's complete, we need to do this thing. And if it's these other things, then we don't need to do that thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, so what did I say? Uh, it's either complete, it uh, was requeued, or it failed. That's that's what can happen. Okay. So then, instead of saying break true here, we can say uh, work loop result. And then find the other places where we're doing break. Now, what this screams at me, <laughs> I mean, this is fine. This is valid Rust syntax. How I would do this in another language might be to take this part, this the, the inner part of the loop and make a function. And then what we're doing here with break is just the return, right? Um, I save this, I'm probably getting an error about the type here, right? Because 
here, it's mismatched, right? It's inferring that the type of is complete is uh, is a unit type because of the other uh, breaks. If we didn't have the ability to do that, I would really want to go with the function so that we could say that the type of the, re the return of the function is, you know, our enum. Um, I think also changing is complete here. This the name of this doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, we can call the status. And then let's look at the other breaks. So if we're here, we want to break to requeued. And then if we failed, we have to do the task status to failure and we want to result in a, a failure. And now what we want to say is if status, we don't need to status equals complete. Uh, okay. Can't do that. Binary operation equality cannot be applied to type work uh, loop result. We might need a, a implementation of partial equal, or we could derive partial equal. Let's try that. Okay, error went away. So this should fix the, the bug, uh, which was again, why are tasks being marked as complete after they fail? Well, after failure, we were immediately just unconditionally marking tasks that got to that point at the bottom of the, that function as being complete. So that's why. All right. Um, so. probably just go through and try to fix warnings uh, in a in a batch okay so let's build we can test that I already ran this through once after I updated the Rust version. So that should save us a couple of steps this time around. Um, and so, assuming that that works, that doesn't introduce any other problems, why are the, ta uh, the playlist tasks failing? Is the next question. And I'm gonna guess it has something to do with the the input that's being passed to the uh, second task, the follow-on task, the chained task uh, that is being told, hey, you should add such and such video to such and such playlist. So once the upload task completes, it has a next task. Um, thing on it. 
and the tasking system picks that up and then queues that next task and passes into the um, the actual API endpoint that it calls to do the work, it passes the results of the previous task. So the previous task will have the video ID um, and it will merge that with the payload of the, the original pre-prepared payload for next task, which will have the playlist ID. Um, and so those get combined together in the, in the work to um, make the API call to YouTube to add the video to the playlist. So why doesn't that work? Um, and I guess there are a couple possibilities. Like somehow we messed up uh, the refactoring of the code that calls the YouTube API so that the data is not being passed in right or the task um, worker and when it's invoking the API, it's not passing in the way it's expected, the result from the previous task, or somehow the previous task and it, it, the, so the thing that's uploading YouTube video is not returning the video ID correctly. And so it's not making it back to the task worker to be saved or that's not being saved. You know, so we just have like a chain of things, right? And that's, one of those things are more than one potentially that uh, are not right. Just have to debug that. Do I have a video that's ready to be uploaded? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, 70 does not have a rendered video file yet. I can potentially re-upload 69. Uh, maybe it's time to think about how I can test this without like, exercising everything. I mean, one thing potentially I could do is create like a test API endpoint to, that I could queue up a task to call. And then have that task also have the next task that also cost, calls the uh, test uh, API endpoint. And it would just log whatever it gets passed stepping through that way so we could actually test the actual code of the tasking system without actually calling underlying APIs that then would call YouTube API it's worth considering um, Do I have any other these don't have video files either. What I really should do is I should have a column here that indicates whether or not the media, like the rendered media, is uh is present on the episode. I'll be able to filter by that as well. Uh, another thing I could do is I could create a test like series and a test episode and have just a, a random small video file um, and go that route, right? Rather than trying to do this with, um, well, I don't, I don't have any real video files ready to upload yet. I could, I could do the full thing and just use test data. Uh, I think I might do that. That wouldn't be hard to set up. I would need to create a playlist in YouTube. We need to go find a video file. Um, yeah, let's do that. So we're going to create a new series. 
call it. Uh, why are there two asterisks? Uh, test series. This is for testing. Uh, we're going to go create a playlist. Content. Playlists. I can create like a private playlist, right? Can I even create a playlist from this view? Oh, from here. There we go. Test playlist. Visibility private for testing. Hopefully I'll be able to add things to that. So if I click here, the ID is this bit. No. Uh, and we will add that to here. Category is going to be, well, this is for testing. It's very scientific. So we'll put in the science technology <laughs> as the default category for videos. Um, and then we'll create an episode, test episode. Uh, oh, interesting. I really should have it so that this allows you to select which series. Uh, I haven't I haven't touched I think the create view because I have the thing that like bulk creates episodes automatically from a stream so I don't really normally use this so this is kind of now uh, broken <laughs> okay well uh, is our build done yes so we built that's good uh, let's fix this create view for episodes. So presumably we're missing fields that are now required. Response, failed to deserialize the JSON body and the target type, missing field stream ID. Okay. Stream ID, we probably have a field already. Star.tsx. reference input there we go um, maybe something like that okay I don't suppose it gave us a full list did it oh just one thing okay so stream is that I can leave I think I can leave that blank it's not that it needs it, it just needs the field present. Missing field stream ID. Last. Uh, let's see. Do I do this? Not a text template, it would be like a select. I forget. There we go. Uh, except it doesn't have a name, it has a title. Okay, so, test. So, we're trying to not create a stream, we're trying to create an episode. Because that's that's built in. Why?
how do I get it to include the field in the request, even if I don't populate this? Huh. It should definitely be a thing. Um, maybe that's an option on the data provider. All right, so we're using um, simple REST data provider. HTTP client. Okay, let's look at this from the, uh, the other direction, right? So on the back end, let's so see handlers, episode create. All right, so we have a create episode request. And the series ID is optional. The stream ID is not optional. So that, that, uh, that's why uh, stream ID is required. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a thing. And then series ID. That's a good guess. Required not it thinks it exists. Reference input props. Input props. Freedom disabled is required. Interesting. This one should not be required. Still doesn't work. change this to a text input. Get rid of that and I'll just be able to manually put in the ID. Oh, now is required works. I maybe I needed to put the is required in the child component. That could be the case. Anyway, let's go find uh, or make a test stream. Stream for testing. This ended up being a little bit more involved than I thought it was going to be. Uh, sure, that's not required, so hopefully that's fine. Uh, today, at uh, what time zone is this in? Uh, none. Please match the requested format. Oh, yeah. Okay, 2024. <laughs> 0803. I, I 
require it to be in that format? Apparently. That's maybe a little silly. All right, back to here. Let me create, oh, right, right, right. So because I made this a text field, uh, let's move. There we go. I can grab the ID from the URL. Because I guess I'm not displaying it anywhere. Go back to here. Test episode. Stream that. Series. Test series. Category. Uh, this is the point where maybe it should autofill if I've selected series. Save. Still doesn't work because tracks are missing. Um, right. So the edit view probably has tracks. input from wherever it is. Did I? Did I really make it so that it's uh, not a default export? Okay. I have mixed feelings about that. I do like the just like default export thing. Like what I did here. I really dislike it being inconsistent. Uh, but we're, we're not going to go yet another deep so I'll just leave it for now uh, oops uh, let's go back to streams get the ID again oh and I have to wait it was an autocomplete um and then it doesn't really matter not actually publishing videos from this. Uh, there we go. There's tracks. What else is wrong? Invalidate null. Expected a string. Okay. Apparently, I can't go <laughs> from the beginning. I don't like that. How about now? All right, we did it. This is what that looks like once it's created and we're in the edit view. Okay, now I need to have a test video. So let me go see about that. I'm good. I can open. Uh, okay, so videos. Do I have a little test video that I can use? 15 megs. from uh, September of last year for one of my uh, shorts from Create Astral. I'll use that. It seemed like it didn't have audio, but that's okay. We're not, we're not testing video upload. We're testing the whole process works. So I'll dump that into here, uh, into the renders folder. And that means that when I click browse, it should appear here. It does not. Maybe I need to refresh. I wonder if it pulls the list when I hit the page. Oh, it's not an MP4. That's probably why. Uh, video renders. It is an MP4. Why doesn't it show up? Oh. Hmm. It really should. Be right here. Find rendered episode files. We don't have any rules on um like this is just scanning the folder, so I'm not sure why. I like that it indicates it's slow. Apparently, well, 
why is scanning a directory slow? Oh, maybe because we're pulling metadata, right? So we're calling FF probe on each of these video files as we're, as we're doing that. Let me open a new tab. So if I hit this endpoint, um, I don't see the, the, the file errors. Oh, there we go. Now we get some formatted JSON. Uh, episode 63, 64, 65. 67, 68, 69, 59, 60, 61, 62. Why? It's my other file. All right. Find files. How does this endpoint work again? Hey, Moody Abigail, thanks for the lurk. <laughs> Hope your Sunday has been going good. All right. Um, I don't see it hitting the file. Previous request. Oh, there it is. So. Probing. Why aren't we returning it? Maybe there's some filter in the code. Um, let's see. No, of course it's not called find files. Uh, let's see. So, I think it's in stream ingestion. Yeah. Then, so here's find files. Get entries. So this is this function down here where we're reading the directory. And then we scan over the directory. This is where we get metadata of the file. Let me call FF probe on it. Um, so I note that we have an error case here, but we're not doing any kind of tracing on this. So let's do some tracing like that. Um, this is interesting. Why would we continue if there was an error? Let's change this also. Like, I get it's kind of weird if we're not able to get the last modified, but we'll just use now. Um, okay, what did I mess up? Oh, we're missing a uh, curly brace. At least one. So this one pairs with that. This one pairs with that. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. It's just a little out of date. So I'm guessing um, that file was created and never modified. It didn't have a modification date somehow. I don't know. Or this failed. But if this failed, let's see, our, we're in a loop here somewhere, right? Yeah, while let. So we just skipped the file. 
if we what was happening before was that if we couldn't read the last modified date we would skip to the next file because i'm pretty sure what was going on there so that's that's interesting this field might not be available on pl all platforms so we'll turn an error on platforms where it is not available Um, which is interesting. That kind of implies that like it would fail for all files. But if that fixed it, then that reading is incorrect. So let's see. API. I think this is this, this beats waiting for like a dozen containers to be rebuilt. <laughs> now it's still not here it's unfortunate if I hit refresh here do I see my file 62, 61, 60, 59 that'd be one with a very different file name okay well let's check the uh, the logs here. So here we go, find files, file, this is the file. Um, we get metadata, is file. Permissions, probing. Okay, and that's not any different than the other ones, right? Find file, file, find files, metadata, and then probing it, and then it moves on to the next one. So what is different? happening differently here it uh, I'm pointing in I'm checking that uh, we are still not getting results and there's not really any kind of caching layer or anything that would uh, interfere with this so and obviously the logs are showing that it's seeing the file. So where is it? Where is it failing? Um, labels metadata. Tracing. So we're getting as far as probing here. Did we come back from this call? I mean, we, we see, we don't see this line, right? Um, we're not logging anything here. Let's uh, let's add a trace. Oops. Tracing. Debug. Yeah, I don't really care about all of that. I just want to see. I really want to just see the file name again. was probed. There we 
go. And then at that point, then we build the metadata. There's not really anything. We have this, this trace here. Uh, theoretically, we could be panicking here, but we would see that in the logs. And we we probably shouldn't unwrap like this here. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna rebuild this and see if we get that second log message. And uh, it's about time for me to take my first break. I'm going to go get some more water and uh, go take a walk around the house. And I'll be back in just a couple of minutes and we'll uh, see if we see a log or figure out why this is failing so that we can set up the test data to test the tasking service. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> 